One of the most important aspects of proper rowing is to have what we call ratio, which is the timing between the drive, which is the work phase, and the recovery, which is the rest phase. I'm going to have Chad come to the catch, pick up the handle. Again, when we revert back to the talk of technique, we always talk about what is the proper catch position. Always think about that 90 degree angle at the knees, the chest over the thighs, the forward rotation of the pelvis into hip flexion, the chest is lifted. Always coming back to that place when we come to the catch. His muscles are loaded, he's ready to drive. I'm gonna have Chad just start rowing for us. So you can just see him row. Chad comes to us with an experience as a rower. So when I ask Chad to row improperly, it might be a little challenging for him. What we often see though is improper ratio, which is the timing on the recovery, which is eccentric loading, and the drive, which is the concentric work phase. So right now, Chad is showing us basically a one-to-one -one ratio. His recovery and his drive are very similar in speed and time. We see this often in new rowers. What we also see is what we call reverse ratio, where there's a rush to the catch and a slow drive, a rush to the catch and a slow drive. His muscles are getting no time to properly align, prepare, or load the necessary energy. That is why his drive speed is so slow and so weak. So if I ask Chad to slow his recovery, we want to think of this as a three to one rhythm. His drive is the work, one. His recovery, he glides to the catch, should be about a three count. A good drill to try is a counting drill, where when Chad takes his drive, we think of it as one, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, one. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, one. And if we follow Chad, we'll notice it takes him about a second to drive. That is the position where he is applying all that power to the machine. That is the only thing the monitor records, is what is happening on the drive phase. His recovery, which is taking about three seconds, is his rest. It's the eccentric loading phase of his stroke, where he allows his handle to draw his body to the catch. Arms extend, hip flexion, knee flexion work. Arm extension, hip flexion, knee flexion work. Oftentimes when we work with on the water rowers, we think that we ask them to re glide, glide, drive, glide, drive, 1001, 1002, 1003, boom, just like that. Again, if you notice he's got a really nice rhythm going on. You've got to take the time on the recovery. That's when you can catch your breath. That's when you can ensure that your muscles are all properly positioned for maximal performance on the drive phase. You don't want any wasted energy. You don't want to spill any of your speed anywhere other than where you want it, which is applied to the handle, recognized by the performance monitor. So from here, we're going to start talking a little bit about our strokes per minute. So I'm going to have Chad just take his intensity down a little bit, nice and easy. In the lower left corner of his monitor, it's showing his strokes per minute, which is about 14 strokes a minute. Again, he's still maintaining that nice one to three rhythm, that one to three ratio of work to recovery, drive, recover. One thing I'm going to mention while I allow Chad to catch his breath is the positioning of his handle. He draws his handle level on a nice horizontal plane towards his body, and he has a very slight rounded position of the handle right at his finish. The handle comes in, around, and immediately away. We often will equate this to being on a tabletop. So when he drives, it's as though his nails are dragging along the top of the table, as the handle gets near his body, he goes around the edge and his knuckles rub the underneath. Knuckles under, nails on top, drag across. So there's perpetual motion in his handle. You'll notice there's no pausing, there's no stopping. The handle doesn't stick at his body. All the momentum he creates on the drive is immediately applied to that return, to that recovery. So again, looking at his strokes per minute, 
we're going to play a little rate change game. So I'm going to have Chad take three strokes at 14, holding the 218 pace per 500. I'm going to ask Chad to keep his rate right around 14 or 15 as he takes his pace down to about two minutes for 500. His drive speed has increased. When he puts more power into the stroke, into the drive, he gets this pace down. But he's accentuating that slow recovery to maintain that nice low rating. Holding that 14 or 15 rating for me, Chad, see if you can get just under two minutes. Take about five strokes, please. Again, he really kicks it right off the catch, opens the knees quickly, drives with his hip extension, follows through with a nice arm pull. Again, rate hasn't changed. His drive is much more powerful, and you'll notice the exaggeration, slow recovery, strong, powerful drive. Let's go easy, Chad. Very easy. Take all the pressure off. You'll notice the rate will stay the same, maybe slightly drop. But he's taking that split time up as I've asked him to take all that pressure away. We'll try one more rate activity for you to see. So I'm going to have Chad continue to hold his rate at about a 14, taking three strokes. I'm going to ask Chad to change his stroke rating without adjusting his ratio. So we're still looking for that one second drive, three second recovery, or two to six, whatever will give us that one to three, depending on his power application. Okay, so is it a 14? Can you take it to an 18 for me? The only way Chad can take it to an 18 is increasing his drive speed. Good, we went from 14 to 18, now let's go to 22. His pace time will, of course, drop because he's achieving that quicker, Drive speed, which gives him that faster strokes per minute. Okay, let's try one more. Let's go to 26. Good. And let's take it easy, nice and easy. One thing you'll notice that happened with Chad rowing is happens to all of us is it's really hard to pinpoint that exact stroke per minute every single stroke. There's a lot of fluctuation. If I ask for 19, there may be 16, there may be 20, there may be 22. The idea is to row as many strokes as possible within the set time at the desired strokes per minute. And then it'll basically average themselves out. I'll have Chad put his handle in the hook. Those are some things you can do with the monitor, really working on getting that nice one to three ratio and playing around with your stroke rating. Please do not equate stroke rating to power. When you row more powerfully, your stroke rating will naturally increase unless you forcefully elongate that recovery speed.